Shalom, and welcome back to B'nai Noach Academy, Thoughts on the Torah. Please remember to hit the like button, to subscribe if you haven't done so yet, and of course, please share this wisdom and insight with your friends and family. Well, can one outsmart God? Well, those who don't think about God obviously do whatever they do with the absence of God's presence, so to speak, meaning God is present all over, but they don't even think about it, God. They don't give it any consideration when they're doing whatever it is that they're doing. But then you have some people that they do have an awareness that there is a God, and they appreciate that you know God somewhat controls the world. However, they're very mistaken in how much he controls the world. And they kind of think that they have a way or perhaps they can find some kind of method to also control things or perhaps let's call it manipulate things. Thus, when you look into Exodus chapter 1, verse 32, uh, verse 22, forgive me. Chapter 1, verse 22. Pharaoh makes a decree after realizing that he's not going to get the Jewish midwives to just kill the boys, he made a decree, and in fact, for a short time, he even made it for all the people, not only for his, and not only for the Hebrews, but also for his nation, that every boy that is born shall be cast into the Nile, shall be cast into the river. In other words, every baby boy was to be drowned. Why did they pick the river? Why was this perhaps for them, the best method, so to speak, to get rid of the boys. For whatever reason, they wanted to get rid of the boys. That's not the point of our conversation. What is it? What is it that they thought would be to their benefit in this particular method? Well, the sages of the Talmud explain that the Egyptians, they knew history. Pharaoh, he was a smart man. And he knew, they were well aware that God had made an oath after the great flood in the days of Noah. And he had promised that never, ever, ever will he bring the destruction of water on the world. So now they decided they're going to manipulate things. And they knew that typically God, when he punishes or when he rewards, it is always, quote, a measure for a measure. In other words, in the same manner that one sins, in the same manner that one commits their crime, that's the manner in which they're punished. In the equivalent manner. Therefore, they calculated and manipulated that if they commit this atrocity, even if God decides to punish them and somehow he gets to overpower them, he won't be able to punish them by virtue of his own oath. His own oath will restrict him from doing anything to them. Why? Because their atrocity, their sin, will have been perpetrated through water, and water he cannot bring on them. However, they were foolish. They think they had everything going for them. How stupid they were. You see, God made an oath that he will not bring destruction over the entire world with water. Never did he say that he won't bring it on one nation. Moreover, and this is in fact what happened at the very end, he said he will not bring the waters on to the world. They went into the water, not the water came on them. The waters never came and, and flooded Egypt. The Egyptian soldiers, the Egyptian people ran into the water and that's when they were drowned. So never try to manipulate God. Never try to outsmart God. Just we need to do what we're supposed to do and let God be in charge.